UCA proudly presents our quarantine project, Fortune Cookie Conversations, interviews and conversations exploring the unique Chinese American experience beyond fortune cookies. Hello, May here, here to talk to you about Jordan Shoe. I also recently cut my mangs with fabric scissors, and I do not recommend that because now they're too short and they're a little uneven. But it's fine, because now I kind of look like this all indie artsy girl, if you understand what I mean. It fits our video today perfectly, because Jordan is the guitarist and programmer for the band duo Sales, which falls under the categories of indie pop, indie rock, dream pop, and lo-fi. So if that sounds interesting to you, I highly recommend that you check them out. Though I would be quite surprised how you didn't know them already. But perhaps you'll recognize their songs Chinese New Year. I see you at the movies. I see you with your lipstick on. I'm looking out for cars And for Nay. which blew up on TikTok recently. When I asked him if he expected that to happen, this is what he said. That was really unexpected. Um, so, you know, we, when we started making music, we, you know, we went through the, the SoundCloud, you know, era, Bandcamp era, like, and now, you know, you got Spotify, like just all that. And then, um, yeah, like, yeah, we had, we didn't, we didn't try to get on TikTok at all. Like it's just, you know, people started to, use the songs um and it just took off so we had we had no idea like i had actually been kind of like oblivious to the whole thing up until like this year um like didn't didn't even look at didn't even really see the videos you know it was it was like something you know other, other people told, told us about um and then i'm like wow that's crazy there's like you know hundreds and thousands of these um but i think it's really awesome it's like super wholesome this is definitely one of my favorite things about TikTok, how it allows small content creators finally get the recognition that they deserve. And it really annoys me when people are like, TikTok ruins songs. No, it doesn't. It's literally allowing small people to go big and become more mainstream and you know, get money and all of that. And I'm sure that your content creators are very happy about TikTok using their songs. Your individuality complex is not that important. <laughs> Anyways, hearing him talk about his career. It's so weird calling it a career. Like, I think that's my first time ever calling it a career is in this interview. Because um, I've only had a career for the last, like, couple of years anyway. So. <laughs> it was really interesting to me because he doesn't see himself the same way that I do. When I asked him what his proudest moment was, this is what he said. Yeah, playing Coachella was a really proud moment. Um, we played Coachella last year. Um, or, sorry, not. Wait, was it last year? <laughs> yeah. All these years have been bundled into the same year. But uh, yeah, we played Coachella. I forget which one is it, 2018, 2019. 2018, 2019 feel the same, like the same. But uh, yeah, we played Coachella, and that was like a super big moment. Um, super proud, super proud of that. Um, just because of how, you know, how much prestige and how much, you know, significance that festival has. Um, and never having even been to many music festivals. So, so that, that was really amazing. Later when I asked if he ever thought he'd be able to be performing at a stage at Coachella, this is what he said. No, no, absolutely not. Um, a, a big part of why like, we were able to play Coachella is because our booking agent, Joan Lee, um, big shout out to her. She's actually um, uh, Chinese American as well. Um, her, her, um, her family's from uh, oh god disregard. <laughs> like, I'm having a blank. Her family's from uh, and where is it? Oh my god, I can't think of the place. Yeah, sorry. Disregard that. Hopefully that's regard. Yeah, but yeah, she's she's Chinese American too, and yeah, but she was awesome. And, she, and ever since we met her, the day that she asked us if we wanted to be her uh, client, um, she had been working towards getting us on a, a Coachella spot. Um, and like, and it never in my mind, even even up till the point we played it, I, I didn't think that we actually like deserved it you know, at all, like, <laughs> like I, never, I never thought, it, I never thought any of this would happen, I never thought you'd be interviewing me now, like, 
like you know like just just i'm always i'm still i'm still like in awe of everything all right more information here is his origin story from a young age i've always been like listen like making music like 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 as soon as i got a computer um that's when i you know found out you can make music on on a computer like and i was like seven years old so like from seven to like like now like you know i was always just like involved with like making music on the computer um so i, I never thought like it would be my career it, it literally turned out to be the only thing i really was good at like in the sense that it was something i had been doing for so long that it was like it, it just felt natural um so yeah like you know there, there was a point where i, I didn't have a job i didn't really have anywhere i didn't know where i was gonna live you know like very like this was after college um after i didn't i didn't graduate i don't know did, hey everyone i didn't graduate college you know, it's, <laughs> that's another thing it's okay if you don't graduate college you know, just figure it out figure some stuff out like as long as you're like motivated to figure stuff out it's okay you know being graduate college um it worked out for me so so like yeah i, I, I dropped out of college and like I, I was in debt, not a lot, uh, but I didn't want to take on more debt to go to continue. Um, just because I, 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 I knew I wasn't going to do any better. Like my mentality was still the same. You know, I just wasn't really fit for like academia, you know. Um, so, and like throughout that whole time, I was still making working on music, you know. And then so so there there was a point where I was like, okay, this is what I do all the time. Like maybe I should make this my like the thing I'm trying to pursue as a career. Um, so I, I worked on my own stuff. I was I was you know doing like electronic music. Um, I was trying to get like DJ gigs, like really trying to put myself out there uh, with my electronic music. Um, meanwhile, like I had met Lauren in high school, like three years prior. And, you know, we 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 kept in touch. Like even like the first time, the first thing Lauren and I did, like I always felt like was special so that was always something that was in the back of my mind um and uh so even when we weren't like in the same town or like you know even really keeping in touch like i you know i would always try my best to you know try to reach out to lauren whenever i could you know uh, to, to try to make music with her um and then um yeah that that's i think that's when it really clicked for me like we're like you know meet, meeting someone else like working with someone else bringing it all together um that's when i was like wow like this has really got a lot of potential yeah like you know when you when, when you're working on your own thing it, you can you can get in your own head and there's no there's not a lot of it's hard to be 100 percent confident when it's like just you you know what i mean like it, it, it can it, it can become kind of like egocentric um but when you're when you're working with someone else and you see their talent and then they're able to bring their their skills and talent to the table and like and then you bring yours and then and then it converges um that that's when i was like wow this is like really this is like amazing like we gotta we gotta try you know we gotta try for it um and um so that that that's it, it just kind of naturally went that way I, I went from like not not it went from like didn't do well in school to like dropped out of school to like okay i gotta like figure out how to make money and like live so i, I ended up getting a job at a call center like a 10 hour to making ten dollars an hour um for 40 hours a week that was like my that was like my that was my like my, my outlook essentially it was like okay if i don't do something um in parallel like if i don't try to make something happen i'm gonna be working at this call center but that that's when that's why i made the decision like let's let's try to make a career out of this um and there's a lot of doubt a lot of unknowns a lot of like yeah, a lot of a lot of risk involved, like you know, like. But ultimately, you know, I remember, you know, Laura and I had a conversation, like, you know, like even if nothing comes out of this, let's just put this record out, which was Renee. Let's put it out. Let's put the vinyl out. We got three hundred vinyl records made with our own money. It took like three or four years to sell all of them, like. Um, but like ultimately, that was our goal. We said, hey, let's just put this out. Let's see if, let's see what happens, and whether whether or not it takes off. It's fine. Like we'll, we'll just be happy that we put it out there. And then the rest is history. 
it was really eye-opening hearing him talk about this stuff because I did not start listening to sales until around 2019 when Chinese New Year became really popular. In fact, I actually thought Chinese New Year was released pretty recently, around like 2017, but no, it was released in 2014. So yeah, their music was definitely ahead of their time. But anyways, I didn't know like all this stuff happened beforehand, and I don't think I recognized that so much work is put into creating content. So I appreciate your artists because they have worked very hard. My respect for sales has skyrocketed after doing this interview, and I hope it has for you as well. Hearing him talk like a human and about being human was also kind of eye-opening to me because I only see people like him, like celebrities, as what I see, and that's very limited. So I often forget that there are humans who are capable of human experiences and emotions and feelings. I often think they're like robots programmed by the government to give us entertainment. But I don't think Jordan's a robot because his story is very relatable and very, very human. And I don't think robots have the capacity to do this yet, hopefully. Yeah. You know, growing up, like, you know, I, I, there wasn't a lot of Asian people where I grew up. I grew up in Port St. Lucie, Florida. Um, which is a really small town already. Um, not the smallest town, but in terms of, you know, in terms of an Asian population, there wasn't really any. Um, so I was pretty aware of my identity as a, as a Chinese kid growing up, like <laughs> from, from a young age. Um, you know, unlike, you know, like, you know, you, go, you move out to LA or somewhere in California and like you grew up with a bunch of, you know, Asian, Asian kids and stuff. Like, I, I really, I, I think I hung out with like, one Asian family, the, the family that uh, my mom actually worked for, actually. Um, she was, she's a, a waitress. They, they, they ran a restaurant and she worked there for like 20 years. So um, it's really when, you, you know, you're, yeah, I mean, you're, when you're, you're a kid, you're like trying to find like friends, you know, you're trying to find like a group of people to, to hang out with. And yeah, there was not a group. Like it, that's, like, that's kind of the unfortunate reality of like school, at least when I was growing up. Probably still the same. You know, like, you know, everybody kind of, you know, flocks to the people that look like themselves. Um, and, you know, that's just normal. Um, so, yeah, there wasn't, like, a group of Asian or Chinese kids. Um, and, you know, what's funny about about that is, like, as I grew older, like, even when there were, like, groups of, you know, Asian kids or Chinese kids, like, in, like in college in particular, you know, I didn't really, fit, I didn't feel like I really fit in. Like, I never felt like I really fit in like with any group, like, you know, so, yeah, so that was, that was the tricky part, like, you know, like, even if you did find people that, you know, that looked like you, it's not necessarily people you want, you know, that you really related to, you know? <laughs> he also says this in regards to UCA. I was like, this looks like for, it's for like rich, like business people that actually have real jobs. <laughs> I was like, you have a job. <laughs> I, know, I know, I know, but it's, it's just funny to me because, like, I was looking at it because there's like a board of directors. You know, there's like, you know, there's all these people that look like they went to Harvard and like Stanford. Oh, like, <laughs> I, I, I didn't even graduate college. It's like, did they know that? It's like, did, are you guys sure you want to interview someone that didn't even graduate college? This made me really sad because like Jordan's so cool and like I'm very 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 honored that he accepted this interview and I'm actually doing a video about him because he's like super super cool and like UCA stands for United Chinese American and it sounds exactly like what it means and we accept all Chinese Americans with open arms. I think there's a certain expectation that comes with being a certain ethnicity so it's very easy to feel like you don't fit in. I don't come from a city with a lot of Chinese Americans. So usually when I go like meet someone who is from an area with a lot of Chinese Americans, and like the thing with my city is like the Chinese Americans here aren't like your typical, stereotypical Chinese Americans. So when I go meet someone who's from a place with a lot of that, I feel like I'm not good enough for them. Like I'm not Chinese enough for them. So yeah, that's fun. But just know that if you're dealing with this, that is very common. 
and you're very valid, and you're so Chinese American. <laughs> Jordan's experience is definitely a lot more different than what you expect of a Chinese American, and he says he thanks his parents for that. And they were, he says that they were very open-minded and very supportive of him being able to choose music as one of his passions. And the stereotype is that Asian parents hate when you choose to do a liberal arts as your major. And yeah, that's pretty true, at least for me. <laughs> Even so, he has some great advice for Chinese Americans. And he actually directs this towards the older generation. Don't think too much about make money all the time. <laughs> think about what you what you would do to make the money instead of thinking about the money. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's like where where I came from, like where like the people the China, the, you know the people that I, I like my family. I don't know. Like, there's some very dramatic thoughts when it comes to making money and like the idea of money. He has his own reasoning for saying this as well because there was once a time where he somewhat believed in only doing things for money. My major is pre-med, which is insane because I was a terrible student, right? Like throughout my whole career, like for you to actually do pre-med and like become, like go through that track, as you know, like you, you have to be like knowing that's what you wanted to do when you were like in like elementary school. <laughs> um, so it was a very rash decision on my part because you know, I, my fa I'm not, my family is pretty, like, we're from, you know, like, a, I'm like, I'm from, like, a service working family. Like, my, my dad was a cook. Um, he just cooked in a Chinese restaurant. Like, that's all he's ever known. Uh, my mom was a server. Um, and they, and they, they didn't even own the restaurant. You know, there's different levels to it. You know, like, they just worked for the other people that owned the restaurant. So, like, <clears throat> so when it, when it came to college, I was like, I was like conflicted. I was like, okay, if I'm going to college, you know, and, and I'm going to take loans and go to college and I'm going to try to go to college for something that you need college for. Right. So in my opinion, there's certain tracks that you just can't, um, you can't really pursue without act without college, you know, realistically, like you can't, you can't become a lawyer. You can't become a doctor, um, you know, without college. Um, so that was kind of my mindset. I was like, okay, um, I'm going to go to college. Let me pick something that you actually need college for. And that's actually, you know, if, if you were to finish and do well in, you know, it would be like, it would pay off, right? So, so that's kind of how I picked pre-med. But in, in, in reality, I had no, it, it wasn't really anything I was actually interested in. Um, it was, it was, a, it was a decision based on the future prospect of, financial success which is a terrible it's that's the most that's like the most terrible way to, to go about anything is to think about the financial outcome of it you know what i mean speaking of college here are his views on it that's that's the whole issue with college is that you, for college to work you have to like already know and commit to what you're doing and the problem is like you expect like you know these 20 year olds to like no, to like be committed to like something it's just it's, it's absurd because i just i've been out of school so long i don't, I don't like school is just so like but maybe i shouldn't tell a 15 year old that school is not important yeah school is important definitely go to school like it's, it's an opportunity to make friends it doesn't in my if i would say uh, people ask me like would you ever go back to college i would say probably not for the academics but like probably to meet people but i'm like 30 so it's kind of weird you know like meeting meeting people in college but like in your case like that's like the, that's like the best time to to meet people and make friends like make like long-lasting you know friendships that uh, are much more difficult to find like once you're out of school I would say not saying that I agree I mean I kind of do but uh also not but <laughs> I think I'm gonna go towards college but I still think that this is very true and college is definitely not the only choice. It was also really refreshing to hear this because a lot of the people I interviewed asked what I wanted to do in college and honestly, I don't know. Anyways, hearing him talk about this made me realize how dumb I could be sometimes because, yeah, I 
think a lot about money, and I think the Chinese American community in my area does as well. Like usually in school, you have to do like these career path projects and stuff. You know, you have to choose a career that you want to go to. And you know, when I was trying to decide what career I want to go to, if I don't know what I want to go to, my first thought was to Google top 10 highest paying jobs in XX year, which isn't very smart. I probably should have Googled jobs that have to deal with something that I like, even though I don't know what I like. But, uh, yeah. However, one thing that I do know is that he has a great mindset to go about his life. I just want to be able to, you know, put out positive, you know, energy, positive, you know, thoughts. Um, you know, it can, it can be tricky, like, go, you know, trying to be a good person like, all the time. But, um, yeah, just, just that, you know, like, e even if, like, I'm really happy that, like, I was able to make music that people cared about. Like, but even if that didn't happen, um, yeah, just trying to be, like, you know, someone that doesn't bring bring bad energy to the world. You know what I mean? I feel like it, you know that's really the only contribution anyone needs to make. You don't have to make, you don't have to do anything big. You just gotta, just, you know, just don't 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 bring any bad energy around. You know. I think this is a good example as to how you should live your life. And the more I think about it. The more I think life doesn't really have a purpose. Like, you can just be here and vibe. Like, there's no reason. Like, you don't think about too much. Just be the best version of you. Like, life is kind of... <laughs> Anyways, he's a really chill dude. And he's really great. I love him. And you should check out his music. He also talks about fishing. A lot. Yeah, just, just like, go fishing, maybe? I don't know. fishing is pretty cool. It looks lame to me though. I only fish in Animal Crossing. I'm gonna go have another identity crisis now. Whee! Anyways, where are you guys this thought?